Lecture 10, it is very, very important for us to understand how our, our meal people interpret the book of Revelation. Their interpretations are different from historical and dispensational people's interpretations. Now listen to me carefully here. It's very, uh, very different between two doctrines. These Amil people, even post meal people, they interpret Revelation not as a future event. This is a very important. See, a historical and dispensational people interpret the revelation as future event. Future event means before the second coming of Jesus. So they interpret Revelation as the signs, okay, before the second coming of Jesus, recorded in the book of Revelation. But here in Amil people, including post meal people, consider the book of Revelation is present. Present means today, okay. And not only that, in a larger, larger uh, uh, scale, church period events. Now, do you remember their church period is first coming and second coming, right? In this long period, it's a, a long Time. Revelation story is not a future story. It is a story event during this church period time. Okay? Not confined to second coming. The story spread it spread it all over the long period of time. So now we are here. Then, based on our situation, is present time. So all the stories recorded in the book of Revelation relates to today, present time, today, Story. So we, they apply the Revelation teachings to present, today, present time. I will explain it more detail later. It's not a future event. This is a very important part. Okay? It's not a future event that is completely different from you know, pre-mill people. Our male people and pre mill people, the understanding on revelations is totally different, opposite. Here, with that foundation, our male uh, interprets revelation, okay, in Six sessions, six sections, or six sessions. They divided the revelation into six part, six part. Okay, now first part is chapter one. Revelation chapter 1, they 
understand chapter one is simply a, the what is the purpose of revelation and what is the motivation of book of revelation. So the story, chapter one story is purpose of writing and motivation of the books. They interpret chapter one like that. Okay, chapter, sec, second session, chapter two and three. As you are aware of that, in those two chapters, seven churches in Asia. Seven churches in Asia. Now, Amiel interprets those seven churches in Asia as such. During this, during the church period, there are always seven kinds of churches existed. Let me repeat. During this church period, always God allowed seven kinds of churches in every country. Okay? In every nation. In every tribal community. You will see there are seven kinds of uh, churches always uh, available. It was God's will in your nation, in your town. Okay? Seven kinds of churches always available. Now, historical premier people shared the same idea with Amir people in this area. Let me repeat it. Historical premier people also believe seven churches represent there are seven kinds of churches during the church period. But dispensational people interpret different way. That I will teach you later. I don't want you to be mixed with all these different uh, teachings. So let me repeat again here. This army people understood seven churches are what? Always seven kind of churches available in this church period. Same as historical. Historical premier people always believe that. Seven kind of churches. Now, let's go back to Amil. They understand chapter 4 and 5. Chapter 4 and 5, John was lifted up to the throne. Chapter 4 and 5. And viewed Father God and the Son God along with angelic forces and 24 elders and many angelic forces surrounded in, the, in near the, nearby the throne. Now, that story was interpreted by this army people that simplifying this. Father God and Son God are ruler. They are ruler. They are rulers during this church period. Let me repeat. Father God and Jesus God are the rulers during this church period. So, not a future event is a 
present event during the first century, always present event even today. So today, Father God and Son God are ruler in this time. Always present time. So they translate, they interpret chapter 4 and chapter 5 in this way. Now, chapter 6 and 16. That's, it's very difficult uh, for our interpretations. When time comes, I will teach you. Okay. Now, here, Amir people understand these chapters, chapter 6 to 16. They understand not a future event. You see, they understand these events are during the church period event, even today event. We are familiar with this seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. Okay. Pre meal people uh, interpret this. Seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls as what? Future event. Okay, before the coming of Jesus. But these people translate this, interpret this, during the entire church period, seven seal stories are there. And seven trumpet stories are there. And seven bowl stories are there. It, it's always present time event during the church period. In other words, during the first century time, seven seal story were there. Seven trumpet stories were there. Seven bowl stories were there. Okay. In second century time, yes. Third century, all the way today, okay, and the future. Now, then why three, three consecutive ways here? Okay, they they interpret first century first seals developed. To seven seal, seven trumpets. It's a, it chronologically developing uh, uh, in their contents, uh, and seven trumpets developed to seven bowls, expressed in different way, but it. Those three are interlocked each other, interconnected each other. But starting with the seven seals and next seven trumpets, next seven bowls, it's a gradual developmental process. Okay? Not an independent event, it's interlocked. Interrelated events, gradual, step, step by step events. So even today, you will find seven seals event taking place. Also, seven trumpets event taking place, even today. And seven bowls event will, is now taking place. Ten years from now on, same, same way, same styles will take place. So now, here, premier people translate these seven, seven, sevens, 
the future, immediate before the second coming of Jesus event. Remember the three and a half years and three and a half years? Remember that? Okay. It's, a, it's not here with this army of people. Okay. Now, here, it's very difficult here to understand and translate this revelation because of this. And these people, Amir people, in between here, chapter 6 and chapter 16, in between, especially chapter 7, chapter 10, chapter 11, 12, 13, up until here. Okay? These, these parts are very difficult uh, to translate Along with this, it's hard to combine together. So they said, yeah, these chapter stories here, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, they said that is a special revelation from God doing between, in between these chapters. Are you with me? God gave John the special revelation. They said, chapter 7 story, 144,000. You are familiar with that, okay? They translate 144,000 uh, dispensationalist and even historical premium people, 144,000 are Symbolically, who? Jewish people, Messianic Jews, okay? But here, Amir people don't believe this 144,000 is Messianic Jews. They believe they are all Christians. It's symbolizing all Christians during the church period symbolizing all Christians during the church period 144,000 so they, they don't believe Messianic Jews why? they are anti semitic people but dispensationalists later they translate 144,000 as what? Messianic Jews Although we are same Christians, different interpretations on certain part of Bible right here. In chapter 10, a uh, little book is there, little book. That's a Bible. It's okay. That's all. We believe that. Same. We share the same idea. But over here is a difference right here. Now, it's getting... More, more complicated. In chapter 11, there are two witnesses stories. Uh, two witnesses. Okay? Now, Amir people, two witnesses symbolizing, two witnesses symbolizing all Christians. Not, not literal, not lateral, two. Now here, historical people and dispensational people interpret two witnesses. Some of them interpret this way. Moses and Elijah. Some are different ways. However, they interpret two persons, two famous persons, literally, literally. But these people, allegorically, symbolically, two means all Christians. 
What a difference. Okay? Not only that, in chapter 12, chapter, from chapter 12 to chapter 12 is very difficult to translate. But over these people, they translate chapter 12 here. In the beginning, the, there, there was a woman clothed with the sun. Okay? Now, historical people and dispensational people believe this one is Israel. They translate that as Israel. Okay? But these people, army of people, translate this as all Christians. Same. All Christians symbolizing. Interesting. Okay. Now, chapter 13 is very interesting. Chapter 13 is very popular today. Talking about two beasts. Two beasts. Who those are? Now, two beasts, historical people and dispensational people, okay, translating these two beasts, it depends on individual, but in general, first beast is Antichrist symbolizing I'm talking about historical people and dispensation people interpret the first verse is Antichrist is political economical social cultural Antichrist let me repeat Political, social, economical, cultural, antichrist. That stands, stands for today's Illuminati. Illuminati, under, under the Illuminati, Freemason. Okay, so Illuminati in association with Freemason. So Freemason is a part of or uh, subordinate of Illuminati. So Illuminati is a major key, key beast. Okay, that is whose, whose interpretation? Yeah, historical and and dispensationalist. Now, here, Amiel people understands this first beast is first century Roman Empire. At that time, Roman Empire, when when John received this message, that was eighty five. Okay. No, 95, I'm sorry. Book of Revelation was written in AD 95. At that time, Roman Empire. So, you see, the first beast is just Roman Empire. At that, that time, present. Okay? Roman Empire. So, during the Roman Empire was ended in 476. Roman Empire was 63 BC to 476 AD. So, after the after the completion of Roman Empire, they translate this. Roman Empire was an anti-Christ power. Okay, so first beast symbolizing the power of anti-Christ. 
They translate that. Okay? The so first beast is, was uh, literally it was a it was a Roman Empire. However, also it is the power of Antichrist. First beast. And also satanic power. So first beast means satanic power dominating during the church period. Got it? It's it different, different understanding. Now, second beast, they translate that, that's the Nero, King Emperor Nero in first century. Then, not only Nero, they said Nero was 666. Because his name, his name translate in, I will go over later more detail when time comes. The 666 is his narrow name uh, translates in numeric system. It's 666. Now, so that 666 symbolizing narrow means during the church period is the followers of Antichrist. Okay, they expanded the, the uh, uh, translation to further to the narrow second beast is the followers of Antichrist. The followers of satanic forces. Who those are? None? Christians. Okay? It's a totally different way of interpretations. You will see majority today's Christians who belong to Amil and post meal understand these two beasts in this way. So you will see in, the, in your YouTube, for instance, some people say, who is 666? Uh, two kinds of ways of presentations. Then you will see, oh, what theological background okay, she had or he had. I'm not saying he is wrong, he is right. I'm not saying that. It's a different view. So I, I understand these two views are all valid. So now I will, I will teach you how to combine these two systems. I don't dismiss one theory, okay? But I accept these two different theories as a, as a group. Now, that's the chapter 13. The special revelation. Chapter 7, chapter 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay? Now, number five section. I have told you there are six sections. Number five is chapters 17 to 20 in the book of Revelation. They interpret 17 and 20, three chapters, 17, 18, 19, 20, four chapters. Okay. These four chapters are judgment chapters. At the end of the church period, that should be a future event. Okay? At the end of the church period, there will be a judgment which was described in chapter 17 to 20. Now, judgment stories, first 
chapter 17 to 1920. That, it's a long story, chapter 17, chapter 18, chapter 19, up until verse 20. Okay? That is a story on two beasts will be judged. Two beasts will be judged. Then here, 1920, these two beasts, these two beasts, okay, two beasts will be casted down to the lake of fire, not a hell, okay? Not a abyss, not in hell, it's lake of fire. Lake of fire is the final eternal place. So it's the verse 1920 said, these two beasts will be casted down to where? The lake of fire. Final destination. Also, Satan, chapter 20, verse 10, Satan will be casted down to the lake of fire. The final destination of Satan, right here. And also, right after the white throne judgment, non-Christians will be sent down to the lake of fire, right here. Okay? So the book of Revelation Chapters 17 through 20 is a story on the judgment story, which will be a future event. And finally, chapters 21 and 22, which is the last two chapters. See? We will go to the paradise, new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Finally, after the church period. Okay? So let me just briefly review here. Amil people understand Revelation, book of Revelation, is not a future story. Okay? Although here last part is a future story, judgment. But, okay? The majority, especially over here, this one, are the present seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. They are not future story. They are present story. Present means what? Church Period, church period. This is a very important part here. Okay? In the, in the book of Revelation, there are how many sections? Six sections. Chapter 1, chapter 2 and 3, chapter 4 and 5, okay? And chapters 6 to 16, and, yeah, over here, special revelation there. Remember that? Okay. Then here, 1720, judgment. And finally, new heavens and new earth. You as a pastor, you should understand this. Because prominent number of people today among the Christians translate, interpret the book of Revelation according to this way. Majority Christians today around the world, obviously your country as well. Therefore, you should understand now, you teach your people how these two groups of uh, eschatological groups 
translate the Bible different way. I hope it will help you. Let's have special glory. Let's give a glory to the Lord Jesus. Okay. And we pray that our God will, the Holy Spirit will help us in increasing our knowledge. Okay. Our understanding and our wisdom as we continue to study the word of God. Amen. May God bless all of you. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord.